So in this video, we're gonna talk about how do you create an efficient trading journal, and I'm gonna give you five tips. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor and Trader here, answering your questions. Um, a lot of people want to get rich, but they're not willing to do what it takes. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're willing to follow my instructions to actually get rich. Leave a comment below. Just say yes or no. You have two very simple answers. It's okay if you want to say no. Uh, maybe by the end of this video, I can convince you. But leave a comment under this video. Are you willing to follow my instructions to a T to get rich? In this video, we're gonna talk about trading journals, um, trading diaries, documenting everything that you do. Because I think this is one of the keys to actually getting rich in the stock market over time. It's understanding yourself. Because what works for you might not work for me. And what works for me might not work for you. We're all a little different. And you have to accept that and you have to optimize that. Think of yourself as a scientist, okay? If a scientist is looking for a formula, they're testing. They're testing little combinations, they're mixing uh, different chemicals and seeing what can happen. They got their little uh, Bunsen burner and they're, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking back to school when I did these little tests, but scientists test a lot and they write down their conclusions and they write down their thesis and they're very uh, meticulous in their research. No scientist gets taken seriously just by showing the result. Hey, I created this. How how did you do it? I don't know, I mixed a whole bunch of this. No, okay? If you want a patent, if you want anything of, of truly lasting value when you're creating something, you need to know the process inside and out. But with trading, sadly, most people are not meticulous. They just say, oh, I bought this stock here, I sold this stock here, you know, I made some money, I lost some money, and they're not really digging in. So I want you, A, to use Profitly, because we have a feature where you can have your own trading diary. And I want you to think of five specific things. Um, they might not be what you thought, okay? A lot of people think, oh, like obviously the profit and the loss matters the most. No, you might go into a trade with a good plan, you might have done your research, and for whatever reason, maybe the overall market tanks, three out of four stocks follow the market, and your trade loses you money. Does that mean that your plan was bad, or maybe you just got unlucky? Remember, this is not an exact science, okay? Scientists are relying on exact science. If you mix the same parts, chemicals, every time, you will get like the same exact thing. It's science. The stock market is an inexact science. Sometimes the actual worst fundamentally flawed companies can become the best performing stocks. And this pisses off value investors and confuses a lot of traders. But if you're willing to accept that this is not an exact science, things are very good. So number one, your trading diary is not just about you know, profit and loss. For me, number one is what is your thesis? Write down your thesis. What do you expect a stock to do? Why are you buying it? Why are you shorting it? Why are you risking your hard-earned money on something? What is your thesis? Number two, what is your plan? Okay, you might think a stock is gonna go up. Okay, you know, I think it's gonna go higher. When is your exit point? What is your goal? Do you wanna make $500? Do you wanna make $1,000? Do you wanna make 50 cents a share? Do you wanna make $2 a share? What is your specific goal? Number three, what is your risk? Okay, it doesn't matter if you can make a million dollars on this one trade, but if you're willing to risk losing all of your money, is that really worth it? What are the odds that it's actually gonna go up that much where you're gonna make a lot of money versus what is the risk that you're taking? A lot of newbies take these big risks. They follow these traders who post just profit and loss on Twitter and they say, look how I made 50,000, look how I made 100,000, and they don't talk about the risk that they took. They don't talk about their position size. So for me, I want thesis, I want upside, potential, aka the reward, and the risk. These three things are imperative. Number four, I also want you to be aware. What is your specific entry? What is your specific uh, dollars risk? Okay, so if you buy seven thousand shares of a stock at two dollars a share, you're risking fourteen thousand dollars. Think about that. For me, even though I'm rich, I wasn't always rich, every single dollar counts. Going back to the uh, laughable traders on Twitter where they post, oh I made fifty thousand dollars, but they're risking and they're using seven hundred thousand dollars. It's irrelevant. Okay, if someone makes fifty thousand dollars on a seven hundred thousand dollar investment, they're making less than ten percent. 
And if you have a small account, let's say of $5,000, and you make less than 10%, Guess what? You're making a few hundred dollars. So you can't compare everything apples to apples, okay? It's apples to oranges. So you need to think, what is your dollars being risked? What is your thesis? What is your plan? What is your potential reward? What is your risk? What is the dollar amount that you're risking? Not even just risking losing. How much money are you actually putting into the trade? And then there's a whole bunch of other options. You know, if you've seen my trader checklist guide, then you know I have seven key indicators. Um, now, in your trading journal, I want you to see how you put all of those first few things together and see how the trade plays out, okay? So you have two more variables. Number one, you obviously talk about your profit and loss. It's good to denote it because you have to be honest with yourself, you have to be honest with others. How did you do on this trade? How did you do when you combine your monthly trades or your yearly trades? Are you up, are you down? Some people have problems being honest with themselves. Some people have have problems being honest with others. Like, oh, someone asks you, how are you doing? Oh, I've, I've done fantastic. Meanwhile, you know you're down like $20,000. You're not being honest with them, you're embarrassed of your losses. So your actual profits and losses matter. But I want to add one new thing, okay? A little bonus tip for you in your trading journal. What could you have done better? And what do you want to do better on future trades? And if you start writing that down on every single trade, it's actually amazing, especially if you go back and review your trading journal and you review these indicators every weekend like you probably should on a Saturday or Sunday. Look at your trades over the past week. What can you do better? Because we can always do better, whether we made a lot of money or whether we didn't make any money. You know, it's not just about how much money you made or lost on a trade. I don't want you just to judge on that. Judge based on your plan. Was your plan good? Was your risk good? You know, also understand that just because you say, oh, my goal is to make $10,000, doesn't mean that the stock is necessarily gonna get to that level where you can make 10,000. So how did the stock perform compared to what you thought it could do? You need to judge everything. Not only write down your plan, but write down how wrong or right you were on these plans. And guess what? This is all about getting better over time. So, if you say, let's say you wanted to buy a stock at $5 a share, your goal is to sell it at seven, but it only got to 5.10, right? It didn't go up as much as you want. So now, maybe next time, that's not a good pattern. Maybe your goal was to buy the stock at five and sell it at seven, and the thing went to 20. And then you say, wow, I totally underestimated this. This stock, this pattern, this setup has much more potential. So in this you know, new little bonus area that I want you to write down in every trade, what can you do next time? Be a little more aggressive maybe. Recognize the upside potential. Or maybe you had a plan to cut losses and your goal was to lose 20 cents a share. And maybe you stuck to that. Maybe you were completely disciplined, you lost your 20 cents a share. And you lost, let's say, $100. That's not bad. Sometimes losing $100 is a good thing because if you didn't cut your losses, maybe now as you know, you're know you looking at this trade, a week later your losses would have been $1,000. So you saved $900 by being disciplined. Analyzing trades is very complex. We're all different, every single pattern is different, every single setup is different, every single plan is different. You might underestimate a trade's uh, potential, you might stick to your plan, you might not stick to your plan. There's a lot of moving pieces. And I know this sounds complicated when you're first beginning, but trust me, it gets easier. Year three, year four, year five, year 10 of your education, if you keep you know, following my rules and trying to learn from my lessons, um, it's very difficult not to stay disciplined. It's very easy in the beginning not to be disciplined, okay? So if you go in with a plan and you say, wow, the stock just moved too quickly, I couldn't cut my losses like I wanted to, that's, that's usual, that's normal. You know, A lot of people are not used to the speed at which these stocks move in the beginning. So if your goal was to lose 20 cents a share and the stock blew through that and now you're down a dollar a share and you don't know what to do, welcome to being a trader. Welcome to being a newbie trader. A lot of the time these stocks can swing much more quickly than you're accustomed to, much more than you thought. It's okay. This is why I encourage you to trade small in the beginning while you're testing. Maybe even use stocks to trade paper trading. Click the link just below. I'm gonna include a link where you can actually use stocks to trade kind of like fantasy cash. So you're not risking your hard earned money while you're testing. 
Remember, Tim Gratani, my top student, great, great trader, made over $8 million now after starting with just a few thousand, but he made nothing his first nine months. Nothing, Not he didn't make his first million in nine months. He made nothing for nine months while he was testing, and yet, he was using a trading journal, he was writing everything down, he was taking his testing period very seriously. And that's what you need to do. Even if you don't get it in the first nine months, or 12 months, or 18 months, think about what can you do today, what can you learn today, what can you write down today, or this week, or this month, that will better prepare you a year, two years, five years, 10 years down the road. When you have a big, fat trading journal listing all of your trades, what you did right, what you did wrong, your goals, your thesis, and your testing, trying to get better over time. That's today's tip. Leave a comment underneath this video if you like this. Hey Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I wanna share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.